name Kursk is of national pride to the people of Russia, so much so that they named one of the world's most powerful submarines, Kursk. The Battle of Kursk was a significant engagement on the Russian Eastern Front during the Second World War. It remains the largest armored engagement of all time and included the most costly single day of aerial warfare in history. Until Kursk, no major World War II German offensive had been defeated. The statistics of the battle are staggering. Two million troops, four and a half thousand aircraft, and more than 6,000 tanks. Tragically, more than one million soldiers lost their lives. On August the 2nd, 2000, the name Kursk reverberated around the world again, this time as a maritime disaster. One of the world's largest submarines was lost with all hands. The Kursk was an Oscar II class submarine, the largest attack type boat. The primary purpose of the Oscar submarines was to attack and sink aircraft carriers. Even today, there is some uncertainty as to exactly how many Oscars were built. It's thought that 15 of these vessels were constructed between 1985 and 1999. It's interesting to note that Russia built an even larger submarine than the Oscar II class. The Typhoon class submarines are a nuclear powered ballistic missile boat which were deployed by the Soviet Union in the 1980s. The Typhoon is the largest submarine class ever built. They have a length of 175 meters, a 23 meter beam, and a draft of 12 meters. Only six of this class of submarine were built, and only four are operational today. It would seem impossible that vessels as huge as the Typhoon and Oscar Class II submarines could be damaged badly enough to sink. However, on August the 2nd, 2000, the unthinkable occurred. The Kursk tragically sank in the Barents Sea. It's believed a leak of hydrogen peroxide in the forward torpedo room led to the detonation of a torpedo warhead, which in turn triggered the explosion of around half a dozen other warheads about two minutes later. This second bigger explosion was equivalent to about 3.7 tons of TNT and was large enough to register on seismographs across northern Europe. The explosion and the flooding by high pressure seawater killed the majority of the submarine's 118 sailors, but 23 survived in the stern of the vessel. The world held its breath, hoping that rescue vehicles would be able to save any survivors of the explosion. But unfortunately, the rescue attempt was too late and the submariners died several days later, either from a flash fire or suffocated by a lack of oxygen. A huge salvage effort brought the Kursk up from the depths to stabilize its nuclear reactors. About a year after the sinking, the residents of the naval port city of Rosilyakov dreaded government plans to tow the nuclear-powered ship back into port and place it outside their homes. The major fear was leakage from the Kursk's two powerful nuclear reactors and the possibility of contamination to the city area. The Kursk did end its existence there and was reportedly broken up quite safely. Since the Kursk accident, the following incidents have occurred, and although not as publicized, they remind us that life as a submariner is still hazardous. In 2001, the USS Greenville accidentally surfaced underneath and sank a Japanese high school training ship. In May 2003, China announced that the entire ship's crew had been killed aboard Ming 361. Finally, on October the 5th, 2004, the Canadian submarine HMCS Chikotimi suffered two fires after leaving Fastlane for Canada. One crew member was killed.